Sarah, before we wrap up our podcast episode, again, I want to thank you for joining us. I wanted to have you sort of debunk or tell us if these are myth versus truth, some okay. hair debunking as far as like hair oiling or combing your hair too much with hair loss. I've heard a lot about like wearing, like using a satin pillowcase might help with hair loss. And also if you wear too many hats, you might lose hair and certain parts of your scalp. So first off, what is your thoughts on hair oiling as far as like helping out with your hair loss or helping regrow hair such as like rosemary oil, neem oils, black castor oil? So there's a lot of research out now on rosemary oil and how great it is for hair regrowth. A lot of these things you're mentioning are often things that can be found in regrowth serums. Definitely they do help. Um, the, the jury's out on a few things. Technically the only topical that's like FDA proven to regrow hair is minoxidil, which is Rogaine, um, but it's technically a medication that can leave some people with some side effects. So some of these more natural things, rosemary oil, um, tea tree oil extracts, things like that are very nice for your hair. As long as whatever you're using is sulfate and paraben free, it should be safe for your hair. So everything we carry here in the office is you know, sulfate paraben free and often vegan. So as far as combing your hair too much, is there such a thing and describe some of the different types of combs. So I'll explain to you guys what I started experiencing. And I've kind of mentioned it at the beginning of this episode. I normally, back in the day, I was just using a regular brush. Combed my hair. Everything was good. And then until my texture started changing post-COVID, I felt like more hair was coming out. And again, I was panicking. So my mother-in-law actually switched on over. And to this day, I'm still using it. I'm afraid to switch back to a regular brush, to be honest with you. I used like a, a pick type of comb. Sarah, does brushing your hair too much like cause your hair to fall out? What are your thoughts on that? No. So, you know, if you're doing really aggressive practices on your hair. And this is kind of, I think, something that we learned as like young girls, guys and stuff too, from, you know, hairdressers and whatnot. You know, you don't want to be wearing like tight ponytails and tight braids because that can actually pull the follicles out and you can basically lose the hair there forever. If you're brushing your hair gently, comb, brush, whatever you're using, and you're noticing a lot of hair coming out. Um, one of the biggest things I hear is people are afraid to comb their hair or they're afraid to wash their hair because they're losing so much hair. Just know that whatever you're losing is already detached from the blood supply, meaning it's going to fall out anyway. So if you're manually dislodging that, it's perfectly safe to brush your hair. I definitely like people to brush out their hair once, maybe twice a day, just to detangle it, you know, before you're getting in the shower, because that's when you're more prone to there being more weight on the hair when the hair is wet. Um, so I always like to brush out my hair before the shower so that, you know, I'm what I what I'm losing in the shower is less because you're always going to lose a little bit in the shower. It's just gravity. It wants to take it out, but it's already detached from the blood supply. You're not doing any damage. Yes. Like wide tooth combs are certainly safer, um, soft bristle brushes, things like that. But brushing is not harmful for your hair. No. And what about a satin pillowcase or putting your hair in some type of a satin wrap to go to bed? Will that is that like a myth or is that fact? No, it's a fact in the sense that it's good for hair health. So if you're shedding and losing hair, it maybe isn't going to help with that. You have underlying reasons why you're shedding, but it will help with breakage and overall hair health. I do like to keep my hair wrapped at night. Um, I, I've been using silk pillowcases for probably 20 years. Um, I just find them to be more, you know, more gentle on my hair and like the hair on the sides that can be a bit weaker. I think they're a great option. They're not necessarily going to stop shedding, you know, from happening, but it, it's really good to, to keep your hair healthy. Perfect. And the last myth versus reality, I'd like to help have you help us debunk if it's true or false. I've always heard through the grapevine that if you wear a, a hat too often, a baseball hat, you'll start to like lose hair on the top of your head or on the sides. Is that true? Is that false? And if it is true, like what time frame? Like how often should be wear? How often should you and should you not be wearing a hat to help prevent that hair loss? Yeah. So we love hats here because they keep the sun off your scalp. Um, sun damage can equally affect your scalp. You know that's why we have hair to protect our scalp from the sun, keep us warm. So hats are great in that sense. Um, I think there is a big stigma against them that they cause hair loss. However, um, it's really for people that wear them literally all the time. So, you know, any kind of like 
pressure where there's not an area for this blood supply to be effective, you can certainly start to, to notice some hair loss there. Um, but if you're giving yourself frequent breaks from them, you know, making sure it's not super tight, things like that, wearing a hat is perfectly safe. You know, typically these things in thinning, um, particularly with, with men in hats, you know, that's usually hereditary. That's male pattern baldness. And there's really no way to, to slow that down other than certain medications and surgery. Um, but wearing a hat is not the reason why they've lost hair. Well, thank you for helping us debunk some of these myth verse reality type of questions because I feel like a lot of people in general especially my listeners are we're all kind of wondering right you see things pop up on social media you see people googling things or you might see a tv show where somebody is talking about a topic like we just discussed and you're kind of like okay what's true and what's false 